God has specifically chosen you to be here at this time and in this place. You have incredible potential, purpose, and calling to push back the darkness and be a light for Christ. Stand for nothing and you'll fall for anything. It's time to stand your ground. This is Unapologetic. Welcome to Unapologetic. I am so excited because today I'm interviewing Morgan Harper Nichols. You have seen her work, if you don't know, at Starbucks, Target, Anthropology, none of which are sponsors of the show, but just so you know who I'm talking to today, she is amazing. She is a musician, she is a wonderful artist, and she is someone that God has absolutely opened doors for, for her art, her Christian art and inspiration to get out into the world and bless so many people. She's telling us about her journey. She's telling us about what it was like to live undiagnosed with autism for most of her life, and she also is giving us very practical tips for how to live with peace and how to implement peace as a regular practice into our lives. You will be blessed by today's show. Thank you for tuning in. Please join me in welcoming Morgan Harper Nichols to Unapologetic. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, I'm so excited you're here. So we're going to start off asking what I ask everyone, what do you wish Christians would stop apologizing for? Hmm. You know, I think I would say stop apologizing for not having everything figured out at once. I think there is a lot of pressure, especially these days because of technology, because now you have this public record of, you know, right. everything you've ever said, everything you've ever done. And I think at times there's a lot of pressure and anxiety about that. You know, it's like, well, I can't be wrong or I can't, mm-hmm. I can't, I can't, I can't mess up. So yeah. I think that ends up at times leading to a lot of pride or just a lot of like, just chaos, honestly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, one thing I've been working on myself is, is I'm like, how can I incorporate phrases like this into my life, which I believe is very important in, in, in a spiritual practice, which is, which is how, you know, I'm going to sit with that for a few weeks and then I'll get back to you. Or hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to spend some time thinking about that for the next year. Like I said that to someone the other day, they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, I think we need to start doing that more. <laughs> like we don't have to just have something to say. <laughs> like, uh-huh. like, I'm sorry, I'm going to need a minute. Maybe you need a year or two yeah. or three, you know, tarry with it, sit with it. So that's something I'm really passionate about can right you now. Give and some... I'm practicing myself. <laughs> okay. Can you give some context though to like what would be like, I'd get back with you in a year. Oh, like we're not, t- we're not talking yeah. about like conflict with someone. Yeah. That you... Oh yeah. No, yeah. like <laughs> okay. yeah, there's totally a ton of things in the world where an immediate response is necessary. You know, it's right. like if someone says, Hey, do you need me to call 911? Like, yeah, in a year. You, should pro- <laughs> <laughs> you should probably answer ASAP. Right. Um, but for me, what that looks like is, is, you know, when if someone asks me, Hey, are you going to create, you know, um, like I, I used to do a devotional project where I did like a, it was like a free daily devotional and it had like mm-hmm. all this stuff in it. It was like yeah. so robust. It was before I had a child and I had like mm-hmm. extra time yeah, on a no, Saturday like, morning to just, <laughs> to just put all Saturday this together. Morning. Yeah. yeah. And people, people <laughs> ask like, are you going to bring that back? And I'm like, I don't know yet. And they're like, well, mm-hmm. why? I'm like, I don't know. I have so much going on right now. Yeah. And, and I've even had some people say like, well, you know, God, God create, like, how'd you be able to do that? And I'm like, yeah, in that season. And and wow. just because I can't tell you right now if I'm going to continue that, right. you know, it, it doesn't mean that mm-hmm. I'm I'm not ever considering that again. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's just one category that that's that comes beautiful. up that comes up a lot for me. I think because I'm very publicly very creative and I right. put a lot of things out there. So we I just get asked want to, more and more. Yeah. Again. Like when can you get this stuff? Yeah, <laughs> and I just and I just I, I just really want to, especially in our in our. It, in our very rushed time, you know, mm-hmm. it can feel very countercultural, especially for young people yeah. to say like, you know, what, I, I, I thought I wanted to be in ministry in this way. But mm-hmm. now I'm like, oh, maybe I need to take some time. Like maybe mm-hmm. I need to, maybe I want to go study under someone for mm. 
five years or 10 years and then get back to this. Like that should be okay. Like if you're, Mm -hmm. if you're like 22 and you're like, I want to be a youth pastor. And then all of a sudden after a year of it, you're like, whoa, actually maybe I, maybe I'm not ready for the spotlight. Like Mm -hmm. I thought I was like, Mm -hmm. I want, I just want to see more of that, more openness around that. Like, Hey, I need some time. Like, yeah. I thought I was ready for this, but maybe I'm not. Or I wanted to get into this, but I need a little bit more time. I want to pray about it. I want to sit with it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I think that some of that make uh, that's so true. I think I wonder if it comes maybe from fear. Like if I don't make the most out of this opportunity, I'm never going to get it again. Mm-hmm. And I know yeah. we're talking about peace. That's so we're gonna, true. That's the conversation we're getting into. And fear really disrupts peace. Absolutely. I mean, definitely being scared. And we even notice physiologically, like that's when we're sweating and we're in our fight or flight or freeze. Like you're not peaceful when you're fearful. And I was just thinking about preparing for our talk, John 16, 33, the verse so many of us know, in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And so I want us to enter into this conversation about peace because some people love that conversation. Mm -hmm. And I've kind of found it to be people that maybe are a little more naturally geared (laughs) towards peace. But then you have the people that are definitely more fearful, anxious, like peace is almost a little bit of a cuss word. Like they're like, oh gosh, I hope I don't feel convicted about (laughs) about that. Can you just tell us starting out, why is peace important? Why is it something we need to pursue? Oh my goodness. Yes. It's so important because, you know, as, as you just kind of spoke to a little bit, it's it's like, it's, it's such an important part of your faith walk of your spiritual journey. And we see that when you look at the life of Jesus and how in sheer chaos there was still peace be still and you know that wasn't like you know there was that wasn't like there was no instagram back then like it wasn't like just a little cute little instagram quote it was like (laughs) this is a a way of life that is very Mm. challenging it was then and it still is now and it's something that it's important because it reminds us that 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 a, 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 a faithful walk, it's a walk is something that we have to practice pursuing. And I think it can be challenging for a lot of people, including myself, because so much in our world is not about practice. It's about game time. It's about, Mm. well, how can you, you know, how many points did you score? Like, Oh, ha ha. Like you got, you got those people or you told them or you own them or whatever it is. It's all about like the scoreboard. Mm. And that might sound very vague, but it's like, I'm pretty sure everyone can think about something in their life right now that feels like a scoreboard, you know, whether it's a a comment section, which, which, which side of the debate has the most likes (laughs) or whether it's something at, at, in your family, you know, maybe Mm -hmm. your family values people who have a certain amount of money or status or a certain amount of kids, whatever it is, there's so many things in life where it's Mm -hmm. all about that. And what peace is, is something that, you know, it's something we can practice. And I think that for even Jesus to say, peace be still Mm -hmm. in the middle of the storm is a reminder that, okay, this is something that we're not just going to be, we're not going to be, we're not be able to just snap our fingers and everything is perfect, but mm-hmm. it's something that we can enter into and practice on it on a day-to-day basis. So I think that's why it's important because it's, we need those reminders that not, that not everything is meant for us to just figure it all out in, in one second. We're not going to get all the answers right away. We need yeah. to, to practice entering, entering into, into the presence of God. Yeah. Okay, so we're just going to enter now into Morgan's Peace School. So teach us, (laughs) teach me, teach the listeners, practically, how do we enter into peace? Mm -hmm. Or practice it, or however you phrase it. Oh my goodness. So yes, I, you know, I've I've written a lot about peace, Mm -hmm. and I decided I wrestled with this for a while, but I was like, you know what, I'm going to go full artist poetic mode on this. And I want to invite people into this because this is where, how I have learned how to practice peace in my life. Um, Mm -hmm. I was diagnosed with autism as an adult Mm -hmm. and that's an important part of my story because for me, finding peace looks like finding room to breathe in daily life. Mm -hmm. I have a sensory processing disorder also. So even something as simple 
as fl- fluorescent lights or mm-hmm. or or a lawnmower outside can set me back for hours at times mm-hmm. just just from a neurological perspective yeah. so i had to learn very very real time what does it look like to just find that moment of peace mm-hmm. is something i have to practice and what i found is that we each because we're all different and we're all unique in our, in our own way. We can look for ways in this beautifully divine created world to remind us to practice peace. Mm. So what I invite people to do is I invite you to think of a place in nature that brings you a lot of peace. And you don't have to necessarily be able to go to that place, but Mm -hmm. think about all of the many layers and complexities of that place. Mm -hmm. All like whether it, it, for you, it might be an ocean shore Mm -hmm. and it might be. Always. It's it's always the ocean. (laughs) Unfortunately, I live in Texas, but yes. Hey, you have some ocean all the way down south. (laughs) (laughs) Debatable. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. And, and for me, it's, it's a river and it was Mm -hmm. inspired by the song. It is well with my soul which says at the beginning when when you like when peace like a river attendeth my way and I heard that as a kid and I began to associate peace with the river and you know some people might hear that and be like well that's not practical Mm. or is it when you think about it you you Mm -hmm. do we think God just made rivers and oceans and trees just for aesthetics (laughs) Yeah. No, it's not just for prettiness and loveliness and mm-hmm. beauty that we just pass along the side of the highway onto the next thing. Mm-hmm. Maybe it is a thing. Maybe yeah. we do need to slow down and look closer and say, mm-hmm. wow, this random creek behind my house, this mm-hmm. random cloud that's sitting above the mm-hmm. uh, sitting above the house, like maybe God has lessons for that in me too, for me too. Yeah. Not it's not maybe it's not just for the birds and <laughs> you know, the mm-hmm. the the dog barking at a at a um mm-hmm at a storm or whatever it's maybe it's for me too. So that's actually a a practical thing that I, I I like to really to, you know, I'm not normally like a very aggressive person, but that's something I like to push. I like to challenge people on. It's like, slow down and listen Mm -hmm. and, and see, see what God is teaching you in Mm -hmm. the space that you're in, in the Mm -hmm. landscape that you're on. There's so much richness there and there. And that, and and that's just a a good place to start. And that's how we can start to find peace yeah. right here and find ways to practice peace right here. And the great thing is what we know more from just the counseling side is you also have the power to sit there and close your eyes and imagine mm-hmm. something that you think is beautiful. And actually your brain doesn't really necessarily know the difference between yeah. actually seeing it and imagining it. That can still bring a lot of calmness. A lot of times when I think about it, we would call it grounding, like from a counseling perspective, you're trying to ground yourself, you're upset because of, you mentioned so many people now also are realizing they have sensory processing disorders or struggles. And so figuring out, I know that you know, but just for our listeners, how to calm your mind down Mm -hmm. and your body down and how Mm -hmm. much nature has to do with that. And so I'm just kind of thinking about the person that's stressed out at work and they can't go Mm -hmm. on a nature walk, but knowing that you can sit there and you can envision and there's a lot of power in doing that. And if you Mm -hmm. think about scripture, there's so much imagery just in reading Psalms, like you just Mm -hmm. said, and you can envision those things. And then hopefully on the weekend, you can actually go (laughs) see them for yourself. (laughs) But that that really is a technique that can be with you all the time. You can look at pretty pictures just mm-hmm. something that helps you go back to that natural um, yeah. world that God created yes. okay what else yeah. what else helps with peace yes um I love the you know the the route that you just like I'm like yes that is so I think about that person a lot the person who who is sitting at a desk or yeah. doesn't have the ability to go and see somewhere beautiful or be in that place or um, doesn't live in California yeah <laughs> we're like I mean yeah. my husband and I always talk about we're like wait some people live pretty places but yeah, I just want to challenge you because like <laughs> Texas I mean challenge whoever's listening because Texas actually has gorgeous skies like yeah. I think mm-hmm. every 
everywhere has oh, something yeah. that if you're looking, it's, you that's can so true. It. Yeah, and yeah. I, I think sometimes it could be hard to access. You know, I right. I I often think so. Being a very visual person, like and you know, visual artists and stuff, I as I'm creating, I think about specific people or places, mm-hmm. and I see them in my mind as I'm creating. And oftentimes when I'm writing about taking a moment to breathe, I think about this moment that I had one time when I was in Wisconsin in like February. And this is like back in my music touring days. And we were playing in this, it was like a local ice hockey rink. And it was just like sleet and like really grimy ice everywhere. Like it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't like pretty white snow. (laughs) It was just like grimy, like, like, Mm -hmm. I don't know how to explain it, but it was just gray ice (laughs) everywhere inside and out. And a lot of times I'm like, I want to write for someone who's in a place like that. Hmm. I even think I want to write for someone who's in a place like that and also in a hospital room, Mm -hmm. sitting in that uncomfortable chair next to the person that they love, that Mm -hmm. chair with that horrible fabric that's like Mm -hmm. practically plastic. (laughs) Um, I'm writing with that person in mind. So even when I when I was writing my book, Pieces of Practice, I thought about that. I'm like, mm-hmm. what are the practices that I have incorporated to remind me of 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 these ways I can practice peace? So some of them I th- I came up with are playing nature sounds. Mm-hmm. Um, it seems right. so small, but it it can really make a difference. It's mm-hmm. And I mean, you know this with your work, it's fascinating, right. like the associations that we can it's create amazing. just by yes. hearing the sound of the ocean, just by mm-hmm. hearing the rain in a rainforest. So to say, mm-hmm. I've never been even been in a rainforest, but that <laughs> sound, I mean, hopefully yeah. someday, but that sound of the rainforest, it just brings me so much mm-hmm. calm. And I've even just found myself even just listening to that sound and saying, wow, thank you, mm-hmm. God. Like... Even even though I'm not physically there myself, the fact that someone else got to be there right. and take a moment, an hour <laughs> to sit yeah. with a microphone in the rainforest and mm-hmm. create this sound for me too, mm-hmm. like t- that's a blessing. So I, I I really like to think about those simple ways. I, I'm really passionate about, about those yeah. places. Right. Those are so fantastic. I remember um, part of our story is that out of nowhere, I was put on hospital bed rest for 49 days and I was pregnant with triplets and they were in, we're in a very, uh, medically upsetting situation for lack of better term. And they said, I said, what am I supposed to do? And they said, you're supposed to be calm. Okay. So just be calm and like lay here for 49 days. And of course I didn't know how long it was going to be or how short. And I had to figure out like, I'm very hyperactive, obviously anyone watching this can tell, but how was I just going to be peaceful? Cause it really is a command in scripture. It's not that like, this is a nice idea if you would be peaceful in difficult times. I mean, truthfully, it's a command from God for Christians. We are supposed to live a peaceful life. And so I had to figure out like, how am I, how, how am I going to be peaceful? This is not a peaceful situation. And it was really interesting because Anytime I was peaceful, then the babies were too. And of Mm -hmm. course, anyone that's been pregnant before knows like how you feel definitely affects the kids. And so I had to make a playlist and it wasn't, it wasn't of nature sounds, but it was of calming music and music Mm -hmm. that just to me, it had no negative ties. There was nothing but just ease and comfort. So then fast forward so whenever they were like a year old and I could not figure out how to calm <laughs> three one-year-olds down and I started playing, I found that old playlist. And because mm. they had been trained in the womb to calm down when they heard that because my heart rate was calm and I was at ease, a year later, outside the womb, three one-year-olds would calm down when they heard mm. that same playlist. And I think, you know, that's an unusual story, but it's true for all of us that we have those associations and we can bring those good associations into our chaos, into hard times, into when we're in the pandemic and inside or our world had changed, having those mechanisms that we know, which it could be different for different people. I'd love to hear your take on that. But having those just tools where we know, okay, this is what calms me down. This is what helps me because in this world, right? we're going to have trouble. And so we have to know how we can calm down. And so I love that you speak to that. 
if I interview you and don't talk about your art, someone's going to be mad. Someone's <laughs> going to message me or I'm going to leave this and be like, why was I talking to her and didn't talk about the art? Oh, my goodness. Okay. So that is, of course, how so many of us know you. Um, for listeners and viewers, Morgan has amazing, beautiful art that really has like transported me before. I'll look at something that you've posted or something you've created and it puts me in a different mindset. It encourages me. It just, there's different ways that art really ministers to people, I believe. And so can you just explain to us why is art important? Tell us your story. How did you get started really ministering to people through art? And then of course, how God has blessed that. Mm, Yes, yes. And thank you so much for, you know, sharing your story as well. That was, wow, very encouraging. I, I came into art as a kid. My parents are artistic in their own right, very creative, and my parents are also ministers. So I grew up seeing that connection before me at a very young age. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, it's 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 like if you're a preacher's kid, you like you probably have similar stories to mine of just you know seeing the behind the scenes of like, oh yeah, you know that big Christmas production? Well, yeah, we were painting that whole backdrop last night. Like, (laughs) Um, so for me, it was always very much so I saw painting, art, um, comedy. um, Like my mom is totally a comedian. (laughs) My dad's a musician. I saw all of those things integrated with how to connect with other people and how creativity is 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 really a can be a part and used to to love on other people and right. and in a you know and share Christ's love with others through the arts. Mm-hmm. So I I wouldn't have used that language, you know, mm-hmm. when I was five or six, but right. that's what I saw, and I was like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, I, I I can do that, and it was especially important for me because. As a kid, I really, really struggled um, Mm. and still struggle. Didn't know I was autistic, but I struggled with communication. I struggled Mm. with getting my point across in a a, a fast way. You know, I was a kid. You would literally never know that listening to you. I just want to say that. Like, I mean, I I mean, that's not at all what comes across. I just wanted to say, but. Well, thank you. (laughs) I've had a lot of practice um, because I was a kid who was regularly I mean just relentlessly made fun of for like missing out on sarcasm on jokes I was always late to the joke I Mm. I was just a little late on everything Mm -hmm. so I ran into a lot of a a lot of walls and barriers especially when it came to connection and connecting with other people um and it was this conflict of like my heart in my heart, I want to connect, yeah. but I'm not always able to get the words out in time. I'm not always able to communicate as, as, as quickly or, or as, you know, it's like, you know, kids, they got lots of energy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I was one of those old soul kids like, mm-hmm. okay, are we playing hide and go seek? Oh, they've already been playing for 30 minutes and I'm just now catching up to it. Yeah. So I was running into this and For me, creating art and and writing stories became a way of of creating connection when other people want to listen. And every Mm. now and then, you know, I would run into another kid. Usually it was an adult um, who would be like, oh, I really like what you're drawing there. You know, what's the story behind that? Oh, you could do something with that. Mm. And that became just a series of hints and clues of like, here's how you can connect with others and, yeah. and, and, and feel loved and seen yourself. And mm-hmm. I think that was the message that I got at a young age yeah. by making things. So yeah. from there all the way, I was, I was homeschooled and I, that's an important part of the story for me, at least because I don't know that I would have, and this is not, you know, knocking on anyone else's experience. Right. It's just my experience. Yeah. We wanna, we're been, interviewing you. Tell yeah. us your experience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That was such like a, like a therapist way. <laughs> I appreciate oh. that. <laughs> I mean that in the best way. That's a huge compliment. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, for me, it was, it was, um, affirmed at home. Like creativity is good. Right. Try things. Oh, yeah. and just from what I've heard from a lot of people, in, in their school environment, they were told, no, don't do that. Like, mm-hmm. that's just a hobby on the side. Mm-hmm. You know, you need something more serious to focus on. Mm-hmm. So I, I would say that it was a huge 
blessing and a huge jumpstart in a way to right. that when I grew up, I still felt like I could do that. I still right. felt like, oh, there's things going on in the world that are important to me, such as mm -hmm. tons of people my age struggling with mental health mm -hmm. and, and struggling with the stigmas around that. Oh, art is a way that I can use to, to communicate how I care about that. So yeah. I had that for a long time. And, and to be honest, it, it, it hasn't gone away. Um, yeah. the, the challenging part of it is that I did spend many years of my life trying to figure out, well, what's the version of this that make that that's more socially acceptable, huh. if you know what I mean? Like yeah. when I did notice being in college that, you know, when I'm <laughs> walking around my little fedora and like my little camera, like it wasn't, it wasn't as cool as when I was leading mm. worship, playing guitar, you know, that mm. was more in the spotlight, more seen, more yeah. people saw me and paid attention to me when I was doing that. And, you know, when I was awkward Morgan in the camera, like I literally used to go to the computer lab in college and like, <laughs> and print off, um, I couldn't afford a color paper. So the prints were like, I think like two cents each for black and white. Mm -hmm. And I would like print out all my photos, black and white mm -hmm. photos, you could barely see them mm -hmm. on paper and like post them up in the door. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you no, know, you couldn't even see what the images were. So I started to see like, oh, that's not as cool. Mm -hmm. You know, it's more acceptable to be, do the thing that pushes you into the spotlight. Hmm. So I actually spent five years um as a full-time touring musician wow and I didn't a lot that. yeah yeah and a lot of that is a lot of it was when I have a sister who is kind of more energetic out there and mm -hmm. I was doing that with her mm -hmm. and then but the other part it really was is this the thing is this the version of yeah. what I feel like God has called me to do that's more mm -hmm. socially acceptable that's more likely to secure a job or secure mm -hmm. opportunities right. and it wasn't until about halfway through my 20s that I kind of returned back to the part that that really spoke to me and honestly mm -hmm. i felt like god was really speaking to me through making visual art and writing poetry like yeah. this might sound weird to people but god speaks to me through color like mm. it's just a thing like when i'm coloring and i'm painting in blues like that is like that's my time with god like mm -hmm. i it is it is a deeply sacred experience for me mm -hmm. And when I created more room for that in my life, like in my mid twenties and I sat down and I wrote this poem about kind of the struggles that I was dealing with, feeling like I was not enough, feeling like I had mm. failed and let people down kind of through this whole music thing. That post ended up getting reshared on Pinterest over a hundred thousand times. And wow. that's what launched into what I do today with visual art and poetry. Yeah. Um, so it was really fascinating, um, mm -hmm. that journey because I, I, I went, it was always kind of a baseline. I was like, I feel called to create, you know, mm -hmm. I, my parents spoke that over me as a kid and that was such an important part of my life and still is, but I did kind of go through this struggle and still struggle with <laughs> all that. And then it, but it wasn't until I kind of returned to this, like, okay, even if it's the thing that you don't feel like is the most popular, the most interesting you know, but it, to other people, you know, it's like God is speaking you to this pl in this place. Mm -hmm. So nurture that, stay with that, spend some yeah. time there. And um, yeah, even over the past few years with the collaborations that I've had, the opportunities mm -hmm. I've had with my art in Target and anthropology and all these places, yeah. I can look back at those and I can still see even with those. I'm like, I didn't know that when right. I was drawing that it was going to lead to target or mm -hmm. <laughs> I had no idea. It's like, in fact, right. if you told me, Hey, this artwork that you're making is going to end up in target, I would have made something totally different. <laughs> it came from me, you know, it came from me just, mm -hmm. Oh, they ended up picking things where I was just, I was just making that to help me find yeah. peace in that moment while I'm, trying to be a, a parent of a toddler in a pandemic. You know, I made that for me. And as it turns out, that ends up connecting. You made it for all people, of us, Morgan. So. <laughs> we all we all needed help during that time. Well, yes. I want to talk about something because I'm a pastor's daughter too. And so yeah. 
Um, I'm glad that you referenced that. And you're talking about being obedient in your calling. And a lot of times, I think in Christian circles or culture, when we talk about obedience, we're talking about not sinning. We're like, you know, you need to be obedient and stop, fill in the blank, or start, whatever. Yeah. But in the context of your story, when you're talking about being obedient, it really was it, it's just different. It was being obedient to your calling. It was stepping into that. That's that's a different way to think about obedience because usually we think about it in the context of sin, and you're talking about it more in because you followed, I'm just guessing, the prompting of the Holy Spirit and listening to God. That helped you fulfill really what he had for you to do, which ended up being absolutely amazing. So can you just talk about that obedience journey and just that's really a different conversation yeah. about obedience. Yeah, for sure. Um you know, I think for me, you know, in this context, I think about how how you know, if you're the kind of person who who has spent time like, you know, hearing Bible stories or reading the Bible, mm-hmm. one practice I like to encourage is like what are the stories that really stand out to you? And I think there could be some, some clues or insight of like, oh, wow, maybe that's reflected in my life some way. That's why it's standing out to me. So one Mm -hmm. of those stories for me, like for whatever reason was, was, um, like Saul on the road to Damascus Mm -hmm. and like, um, Jesus is showing up like, Hey, I need you right now. Like (laughs) change everything (laughs) this very second. Mm -hmm. And that story always stood out to me so much. And, Mm -hmm. I've thought about that a lot. Like, why did that story stand out to me so much? And Mm. for me in my life, it's like, because it was the, the immediate call. That's Mm kind of scary. Mm. And I think that what I, what I had to learn, you know, in in the frame of mind of just like saying yes. And, you know, um, and and just, and just like, okay, I'm all in. It's just like, where in my life can I be more open Mm -hmm. to trusting like, that knock on the door of like, Hey, Mm. God's like, Hey, (laughs) it's like, I've given you like, and when I look back, like in those music days, when I look back, there were so many clues as to like, Hey, you're like a whole visual artist. Like do something with this. I was just designing, I was was designing people's whole like t-shirt lines, like, like on, on the tour bus just for fun. I'm like, here's some concepts you could do. Here's your Uh color palette. Like Mm -hmm. I want to sit next to them. Like, yeah, I'm releasing a book. And I designed like their entire social media campaign in like 10 minutes. I was like, like, right. take these four colors, break them up this four ways, focus yeah. on this this week, that week, that week. I was doing that all along, but mm-hmm. I was kind of blinded by this overall, like, but you must do the thing that makes you more successful or right. that more people are going to say wow to you and all mm-hmm. that, you know, it's. And that you, pays. I mean. Yeah. And that pays. You know? Absolutely. I mean, there's absolutely. very much a practical side to being scared yeah, to do something exactly. artistic or where there's not a clear path. Mm-hmm. So I think yeah. it's, I think it's kind of a question of looking at your life and saying like, where might God be trying to get my attention. Right. And I'm kind of scared to go down that route because I don't know where it's going to lead. And if that's too vague, you know, think about those stories that, you know, for you, it might be the story of Jonah, like, you know, Mm -hmm. whatever it is, like, think about those stories where you're like, that story really stands out to me. There might be something in there that, that reflects, oh, maybe I'm kind of afraid of that. Or maybe that's something I need to sit with. That's so good. And tying it back to the uh, our earlier discussion, truly, when you're doing what God, I know you would agree, when you're doing what God has created you for, there's so much peace in mm-hmm. that when you're living out your calling and how God's created you and, of course, how yeah. he's leading you. Um, we could talk forever. We are coming to a close. Other than Starbucks, Target, Anthropology, all the a million places that we can see your beautiful art, can you just tell our listeners and viewers how we can stay connected to you, to your ministry, um, and just to all that you're doing? Yeah, so I am Morgan Harper Nichols pretty much everywhere. Uh, the Morgan Harper Nichols podcast, Morgan Harper Nichols on Instagram, Pinterest, yeah. TikTok, YouTube, all the places. Just wherever your prefer- preferred place is, just look me up, Morgan Harper Nichols. So. 
And I will say, if you are having a stressful day and you're like, I can't go out in nature right now, nope, but you can look at Morgan's Instagram. It brings Mm. just so much truth. It's so much beauty and so much truth and so authentic. And so I just want to thank you for your artwork and being the light that a lot of us need and the encouragement. And I'm so Mm. glad that you chose being an artist (laughs) over (laughs) singing to bless so many of us. But thank you so much for being on the show this was a great conversation and just so so encouraging thank you thank you it was it was an honor thank you so much thank you for tuning in to unapologetic remember that you can listen to today's episode and more wherever you get your podcasts and at ptv.org slash julia 